Hey everybody, it's Debbie Lachusa. Welcome to another Living Inspired interview. Today I'm here with Carolyn Barica, and she has a very interesting story to share and something, again, somebody that's taken, uh, I guess what you could classify as an unfortunate event or a tragedy or something that we wouldn't necessarily classify as a good thing and turning it into something good um, through inspiration. So welcome, Carolyn. I'm so glad you're here. Well, thank you for inviting me. Welcome. So tell us a little bit about your inspired story and what happened back in the 80s um, that's brought you to where you are today and kind of how that happened. All right. And like you said, it's unfortunately, it's sort of a tough subject to talk about, which is why I'm here, because I figure the best way to talk about it is just talk about it. In 1984, I became pregnant at the end of my first year of college. I was unmarried, um, Catholic girl. And I really, at that point, lost my voice. When I found out I was pregnant, I was actually two months pregnant, um, found out in the doctor's office. And it was from that point on where I pretty much left, lost control over my own decisions. I was 19 at the time, so technically I was an adult. Um, however, uh, I was not allowed to make any decisions about the baby. I wasn't allowed to even talk about my situation. Um, my parents, especially my mother, took control about from that point on. And I ended up um, adopting, having a son, adopting him out. And as a result of that situation, <laughs> it caused a lot of cumulative effects for about the next 30 years. So um, because of my religious affiliation, because of um, the fact that I wasn't married, uh, I basically gave the child, I, I hate to say gave, um, surrendered the child for adoption, and that was it. I had to move on with my life. I was forced to move on, and it was never spoken about again, ever, uh, while my parents were still alive. My parents, my father died in uh, 2013. My mom died five months later in 2014. Um, after she died, and I, this is where I'm going to start getting choked up. That's okay. Um, a couple of months after she died, I was in the middle of some grief counseling and for my parents' death. And my brother was also extremely ill at that time. And he was in his final stages too, but that's a different story. Um, in the middle of the grief counseling, uh, the grief counselor who was very, very astute, recognized that I needed more than just grief counseling. So uh, I went to um, sign up for therapy and my watershed moment came when I was in the therapist's office and I was explaining my situation, my adoption story. And I kept saying, well, it was my decision, my choice. And my therapist knew better than I did at that time. And she kept saying, are you sure that it was your choice? Like, oh, absolutely. It was my choice. I had control over it. And then I got to thinking about it. And I realized none of it was my choice. I was completely without control. I was an adult. And the other thing that I came to realize was I have something called post-traumatic stress disorder because I have absolutely no memory of the actual adoption itself. I don't remember going into the courtroom. I don't remember meeting with the judge. I don't remember anything that happened after the um, after I left the hospital without him. So to this day, I have no memory. I don't even know if I signed the, the papers, to be honest with you. I don't remember doing it. I might have. I have no, no documentation, no information, nothing. Flash forward 30 years, all this stuff comes bubbling out. And I realized at that point that I have been manipulated, uh, emotionally abused, emotionally neglected. Um, the, one of the things that I have always struggled with, and I never understood it until I put all these pieces together, was asking for help and support. And because when I needed it the most, it wasn't given to me. Um, the birth mother experience, and the reason why I'm here today is the birth mother experience is not as happy and flowery as a lot of people 
want it to be. It's a taboo subject. Nobody really wants to talk about it. Who wants to talk about the fact that they have a child and they give this child to another family to raise? Um, the way that birth mothers are handled, especially back during my time and even prior to that, which I'll get to in a moment, it is very cold, very unsupportive. It's um, heartbreaking. And I have always wanted to become involved in helping other women who are going through this process to make them aware of what they're about to experience and to be able to support them and help them with what is going to become a lifelong grief process. Um, one of the things that is really sad is that this is a form of living grief and there's no closure. Um, I probably will never ever see my son. I have no idea where he is. I have no way of getting a hold of him. There are search angels out there that do searches, but when you don't have the memory <laughs> of what it is that you went through, it's kind of hard to give them details to search. I've tried. Um, I've been met with dead ends and, and it's a closed adoption. I can't even get access to my own clinical records, my court records, everything's been sealed. Um, and only a judge can unseal them. So tell me what, what is the inspired idea that came from all of this and when did it show up? What do you think? Just talk to me about that. Oh, oh, well, a couple of weeks ago on LinkedIn, uh, I happened to connect with a, a very wonderful woman who is in the process of transitioning in her life from a counseling approach to more of a coaching approach. And um, she asked this question on her LinkedIn page, you know, what's your dream job? If you can do anything. And I just happened to write down there that I would love to help others in my situation. I would love to help other birth mothers. And she wrote back, well, why don't you do something like that? And I said, I have no idea how to, how to do that. And all of a sudden this post that I had put out on LinkedIn about being a birth mother had 2,700 views within two days, which was huge. I mean, I've never really used LinkedIn for social networking at all. I, I've always considered it to be very business cut and dry. I was extremely worried about posting such a personal thing on a business network. I ended up getting so much support for it and so much advice and here, go talk to these people, go talk to these people. Um, before I realized it, I had made contact with um, a law school and they want me to come in next month and talk to them, talk to the family law attorneys who are going to be attorneys later on in life, students, so to speak, about the birth mother experience. And so my inspiration is, came from not not working with birth mothers. That's a very sensitive subject. It's a very tough su subject. But my inspiration is working with adoption services professionals. We're talking lawyer, adoption lawyers, um, OBGYNs, um, clinical psychologists and social workers, whomever comes in contact with a mother who is considering giving her child up for adoption. I would like to educate them on what it is we as mothers in this situation have endured over the last decades of treatment. Um, and I, I'm gonna talk about the baby scoop era in a little bit. So my inspiration is to educate, to create a workshop, training program, and go out and meet with people and talk to them face to face saying, you know, if you're working with a woman who is pregnant and is considering this, these are the things that you need to provide for her so that she's not ending up in a lifetime cycle of depression and guilt and shame. So that's my inspiration. You know, I, what I love about what you just shared is, because this happened to me in the last few months. In fact, I just wrote about it on my blog today. The power of asking a question sometimes, a simple question that, that someone asked on LinkedIn in your case, and you responded, just, you put it out there. 
you, you kind of like my dream job. You didn't overanalyze it, overthink it. You just answered it. And then she challenged you back. Why don't you do it? And then we kind of get in our head. But when we let go of that and we just step into it one step boldly, yours was to write that post on LinkedIn and you were hesitant, but you did it anyway. What was it that just made you go through and do it anyway, even though you were a little worried about sharing that openly? Because I'm tired of the silence. I'm tired of the shame of holding on to the silence. I'm tired of the fact that society considers this a taboo subject. There is no progress in silence. There is no forward movement, no success by keeping silent over things that, especially what I consider to be injustice and mistreatments of people. So my desire wasn't so much um, to have all this recognition and everything, but just to figure out how to go about creating this program. Like, what? who would I go address? I mean, it really was more as a, I need direction to move to the next step in this program. I certainly have plenty of information to talk about. I have plenty of ideas. I have it all up here, but I've never done a workshop. I've never done a seminar. You know, I am an, a licensed educator. I have no problem talking in front of people. I also have a background in communications and public relations. So I don't, I don't have a fear of talking to people. I, I, I have more of a, I don't know how to organize all of this and put it into a, a package that I can take and present to others. And that was really what inspired me because when she asked me that, I figured, well, if she can transition, and if she can do something, then I certainly can do something. Even if it's this really random idea that has been bubbling up for years, but I really haven't done much with it. Well, it, it makes total sense. And you know what I'm hearing in you telling me that, and I've experienced this too, and I'm hearing this in the, in the other stories from other people, is that you were on some level willing to be vulnerable and put yourself out there, even though it was uncomfortable, and ask for help. So it wasn't, it, you know, I think a lot of times people are driven, especially on social media, to look like the expert and put it out there and, and try to impress people or um, only share the good side. I mean, the fact that part of what drove you to do this was the fact that no one talks about this and it's taboo. And you said enough is enough. I've been suffering silently for all these years. We need to start talking about it. And that's, that comes from a place of vulnerability. It comes from a place of service. And you were willing to just put it out there. And I think so often we're afraid to do that. We have to pretend like everything's okay or we have all the answers and we know how to do it. And I have found, I mean, I've been online since 2000, late 2004. Every time I break through that vulnerability barrier and say, oh, the hell with it. I'm just going to talk real. I'm just going to share openly. And if people want to think I'm weak or whatever, fine. That's when I get the biggest response from people. I think people are aching for people to just be real. And that's where you get supported by the universe. And that's what I love about what you're sharing, because that's what it's telling me. Absolutely. I agree 100%. I've always taken a real bad, bad approach to vulnerability, because I've always, I was raised to believe vulnerability means weakness. And it's just exactly the opposite. And it, uh, the perfect example is what happened to me. I didn't realize the kind of response. I didn't expect the kind of response that I got. It's interesting when you put things on social media, what you think is going to get a lot of response, it doesn't. And what you just sort of do on a whimsy ends up becoming your sirens. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I can't believe that happened. But um, it really motivated me to the next the next level and it's interesting because not only am I speaking with you I'm also going to be doing a radio talk show with another gentleman and I'm still have going to meet with the law students next next month so all of that happened within a week's time and it just I mean it just really kind of spun me into a panic because my biggest thought was what if the time comes and I have nothing to say <laughs> I haven't 
synchronize my thoughts yet. So um, again, it just it's it's fascinating to me because I've never been in a situation where I've had so much positive feedback coming at me from all different angles, especially in a subject that has always been very difficult for me to talk about until recently. So. <laughs> And, and I love hearing that because when you put yourself out there and you're doing something from your heart, which you really are here, you didn't just wake up one day and decide, I want to build a business and I'm going to do this and this and this. It came from a pain. It doesn't always come from pain. Sometimes it comes from joy, but it came from a desire to serve and rectify what you've gone through for other people. And I think when we do stuff like that, it's, it's always supported. And the fact that all this stuff has just showed up in a week's time to me validates that. And that's what's so cool about walking this inspired path when you open up to it, because now I wanna ask you, are you just like, are you sort of amazed every day that something else shows up and you're like, wow, where did that come from? Oh, I'm amazed, I'm like that every day. I really have done a lot of work lately with the universe and it seems like every time I ask the universe for something, it delivers like tenfold. You know, and everything has become some sort of a sign or a symbol for me. And um, I've just been, I've just been overwhelmed by it, almost to the point of, I can't believe this is going to happen. When's the other shoe going to drop here? <laughs> so yeah. let's, let's talk about that, because we're talking about the magic, which definitely is there. I mean, I've experienced it for years. But there's also challenges. It doesn't mean that everything is perfect and you don't have obstacles. Have you encountered any challenges yet or? Yes, as a matter of fact, it's very interesting. I do belong to a Facebook group or I did belong to a Facebook group, a uh, birth mom support group. And they actually were giving me a hard time for this. They told me I was only concerned about my own personal agenda. I was doing my own battle cry and this isn't the place for you to talk about what you're doing. And I actually got blowback from the very people I want to help feel better. And it was just, that was interesting to me. Um, and I had to leave that group because I didn't feel supported there, which was interesting because it's a support group. Um, and what it told me is that there is a lot of work that needs to be done here. There are a lot of women who are still extremely upset, extremely um, hurt and damaged. And when you're in that kind of a place, you don't want to hear from anybody things that could make you feel better because you're not ready to move through it yet. So for me, my, my moment, of moving through that big blob of hurt and pain and anguish was when I was in my therapist's office. And from that point on, I said, okay, I'm still going to be upset. still going to be angry. I'm still going to recognize that I have a lot of grief and a lot of hurt and a lot of anger, but that's not going to do me any good if I just remain there in that place. So I need to move on. There are other women who are still in that place. There are a lot of women who are, freshly going through this as in there was one woman um, had just signed the papers literally three days before she post made her first post and she was still what I consider to be in shock. I really want to thank you for coming on and sharing your story because what it illustrates and I hope people get this as a takeaway is that we all have bad stuff that happens in our lives but I think it's there for a reason. I don't know if I believe in destiny or, you know, whatever. But what I do know is that everything that's happened in my life, and I watch this with other people, it serves a purpose. And part of living inspired is when you start getting that nagging voice, you had it for 30 years that this didn't feel right. And that question prompted you to put out there publicly something about doing something about it. Had you not gone through that, you wouldn't be in this position to be able to affect change where you see it needs to be changed. And you're willing to stand up and put yourself out there and get, have to leave a Facebook group that you thought was your tribe, all this stuff. Um, and at the same time, you know, have exciting things show up and go on that kind of winding, twisting, inspired path that has sometimes like a roller coaster. It has its ups and downs. But I tell my daughter this all the time when she's struggling with something and she's 28. So she's still really young. 
And I'm like, you just have to trust you're where you're supposed to be. Everything that's happening, it's going to come into play down the road. These struggles, some point you're going to realize that's why I went through that. And if you use it to serve others and to, to walk your path in life, it's, it's meaningful. So I want to thank you for sharing because, you know, it's not always happy stuff that launches this stuff. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. So before we wrap up, I just want to ask you one last question. What one piece of advice would you share with somebody who wants to either just try to live a more inspired life or who wants to, to start an inspired business? I would say reach into your heart and let your heart tell you what it is that you need to know, because mm -hmm. it's not always your head that's doing the best thinking for you. It's your heart. That is great advice because I think a lot of times our head, we're our own worst enemy and we get in the way. And um, when we can get our head out of the way and follow our heart, I think that's, that, that really is what Living Inspired is all about. So thank you for sharing that. Well, thank you so much again for having me today. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for being here. Another Living Inspired story. We'll see you again next time. Take care.